how do we then do the proportions? Testing for the proportions. When we test for the proportion, we use the Z test. Um, and if you are not given the sample proportion, you will be given the X that satisfies the proportion. And you can calculate your sample proportion. A marketing company claims it receives 8%. So now here is the catch. When you read the questions, they might give you hint, they might give you a P for a proportion or a pi for the population proportion so that you, you know that this is for the proportion. Sometimes it also helps because they might give it to you as a percentage. So you should know that this is a proportion that I'm talking about. To test this claim, a random sample of 500 were surveyed with 25 questions. Test the hypothesis at 0 0.05. So here they also give us our X and our N. So it means they didn't give us the proportion, so we need to calculate that. The six steps still relevant, even with the proportion. So you just need to know all the six steps of hypothesis testing for this to work. Let's look at how we do that. So we know that they said 8% of the mailing. So it is equal. Therefore, it is not equal in our alternative hypothesis. This is a two-tailed test. State what we are given, our alpha of 0, 0,05, our N of 500, and our P, remember, it was 25 over 500, I think. Was it 25 divided by 500? 0, 0,05. So that was our P X over N, which gives us 0, 0,05. Our critical value, we know by now, alpha divided by 2 plus 0, 0,05, it's always going to be 1,96. What I will suggest when you go write the exam, because now you're going to write online, it's easy. Not that I'm teaching you how to cheat, but I'm making your life easy for, right, for when you go write the exam, especially when you go for this type of uh, test. So you can create yourself a, a table and call it the critical value table. And what you do is here you will have at 90, uh, maybe you say confidence level. So you will create for yourself. Oh, sorry. Uh, so you will have a confidence confidence level. So let's say it's 95%, which is 0, 0,05, which then you say it's alpha. And then here you say Z alpha over two, and here you say Z, Z alpha. And then you say 1,96, and then you go find the value for this one because it's not 1,96, it's different. And you do the same for 90 and have the, the 0, 0,10 as your... And you go find the value for it, and which is 1,645 and so forth and so forth. So you will have that next to your material. When you go write the exam, you don't have to go to the tables and go find, 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 find. It will always be there. But you will need to make life easy for yourself when you go write the exam, okay? Okay. Okay. Now, with the critical value we've defined, we can say where our region of rejection will be. We clearly define them because it's a two-tail test, then we have two regions of rejection. Uh, okay, then we go calculate the test statistic. We know our P, our sample proportion was 0, 0.05.
our sample proportion was 0, 0,05. Our population proportion is always in the hypothesis. We substitute divide by the square root of, which is our standard error, which is our square root of our population proportion times 1 minus our population proportion divided by plus a sample size, which is 0, 0,08 times 1 minus 0, 0,08 divided by 500. We take the square root. And when we simplify the whole equation, we get minus 2.47. And where minus 0.247 falls, it falls on the rejection area on the negative side. And then we can then conclude by saying we reject alpha, uh, the null hypothesis at alpha 0, 0.05 and conclude that there is sufficient evidence to reject that the company claim of 98 of 8% response rate exists. And that's how you do the proportion. Okay, likewise. If we use the p-value, we take our test statistic, which was Remember, we found that it is minus 2.47. And remember, since it is negative, it's a two tail. So since it's negative and it's a two tail, we go to the table. We go find the, the value on the table. The probability on the table is 0, 0,068. Uh, it's 0, 0,068. Since it's on both sides, we then have to multiply 0, 0,08 or add 0, 0,08 to 0, 0,68 to itself, and we find that the p value will be 0, 0,0136. And since our alpha was 0, 0,05, therefore we can also safely say we reject the null hypothesis because our p value is less than our alpha. And we can reach the same conclusion. Let's look at this example. Do you have? Okay, an airline claims that 6% of all lost luggage is never found. A random sample of 70 of out of 200 luggages were found are not found. Test the hypothesis at the population proportion of 0, 0,06 against the alternative that is more than 0, 0,06. So it makes our life easy because they tell us this is an upper tail area and it's a one side test. Step number one, state what you are given. The null hypothesis and the alternative, they, are, they have stated it for on our behalf. Null hypothesis, the mean equals, not the mean, the proportion. This is proportions. Proportion is 0, 0,06. The alternative, they told us the proportion is greater than 0, 0,06. State what you are given. We can just calculate our sample proportion here, which is x over n. 17 divided by 200. 17 divided by 200 equals 0, 0,085. And our alpha, they didn't give the alpha and so forth and so forth. So, so far, I can see that number one will be correct. Calculating the standard error. The standard error is your population proportion, 1 minus the population proportion, divided by n. Square root of our population proportion is 0, 0,06 times 1 minus 0, 0,06, divided by 200.
Okay, we calculate that. We find the square root of 0 0.06 times point 0.1 minus 1 minus point 0 0.06 divided by 200. And the answer we get is zero comma zero comma zero one six six eight. And that gives us zero comma zero one six eight. Standard error, zero comma. That is incorrect. The test statistic is equal to, so therefore it means I must calculate our Z stat, which is uh, P minus divided by the standard error. Oh, come on, my pen. Let's do it here at the bottom. Z stat is P minus population proportion divided by population proportion, one minus population proportion divided by, divided by N. Our sample proportion, 0 0.085 minus our population proportion 0 0.06 divided by the standard error I've calculated it 0 0.0168. So 0 0.085 minus 0 0.06 equals 0 0.025. Divide that by point. 0168 equals 1 1.4888. 1.488. 1 then that is not correct. The p value, since this is positive, I need to go find the p value. So this is positive. It means the value I find on the table. So to find the p value, I will use one minus the value I find on the table. So go into the table. We go to the one point one point four nine. So we go to one point four nine on the Z table. We need to make sure that we are on the right table on the Z cumulative standardized table, and this was positive. So we go look for 1.49, 1 1.49 is equals to 0, 0,9319. We go zero point nine three one nine, which then gives us one minus point nine three one nine gives us zero point zero six eight one p value zero comma one four. That is not correct. The null hypothesis is rejected. So if we use the p-value, so we know that for this, my is stuck. My pen doesn't want to write anymore. 
Okay, so our p value is 0 0.068. Zero comma zero six eight, and our alpha is zero comma one zero. So, okay. so our p value of zero comma zero six eight, and our alpha is 0, 0,10. So is this less than or greater than? If the p, p value, if it's less than, we reject. And here is the problem we have. The null hypothesis is rejected at alpha 0, 0,01. So our p value in this instance is 0, 0,6 and our alpha is 0, 0,1. So you will have two questions that are almost exactly the same. <clears throat> Any question? Okay, so if there are no questions, before I recap, remember, you can do your last exercise, which so you should be able to answer question nine and question 10. And based on the information given, so they have told you it's a two tail test. They've calculated the sample proportion. You need to calculate your Z test, which is just your Z set of your P minus your population proportion divided by one minus the population proportion divided by N. You use that. Then you go find the p value. After you have calculated your test statistic, you will find the, the answer you're looking for. If your test statistic is negative, then you will go and find the value on the table and multiply that value by two, and that will give you your p value. Never say I didn't help you to answer the question. And with that, it concludes today's session. <laughs> Just to recap on what we did, we looked at how we calculate the hypothesis testing for the, oh, we actually started with the basic concepts of the hypothesis testing. Then we looked at how we calculate the hypothesis testing for the mean. Then for the mean, when the population standard deviation is unknown, and we looked at how we calculate the hypothesis testing for the proportion. Remember, with hypothesis testing, the six steps are very important. The null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, the sign under the alternative hypothesis helps you to understand whether you're doing a two-tailed test or a one-tailed test. It is very important to know those because if you're doing a two-tailed test, you will know how to find your critical value and it defines your two areas of rejection. And also when you do the Z test, you can use your information about the two tail test to find your P value. And with that, thank you guys for coming through. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you very much.